Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless i've got to ask you about uh, a super bowl ad america's woke evangelists have upset many christians with the latest super bowl ad they've put together let's have a look at what's been called the foot washing ad it aired during the first quarter of today's game and let's just uh, have a look at the message it's uh, giving out what you know is true Don't have to tell you I love your precious heart I I was standing You were there Two worlds colliding And they Jesus didn't teach hate, he washed feet. It's been called a foot washing commercial, Nick. Uh, includes a woman outside a family planning clinic having her feet washed. Uh, the message is that Jesus didn't hate sinners. He washed their feet. But are they missing something, Nick? There's a bit more to that message. Jesus still considered it as sin. He wanted that behaviour to cease. Yeah, I think they're missing a whole lot about the Christian message of uh, <laughs> sin, forgiveness um, and redemption. The gospel was never presented in this ad. Washing people's feet does not save their souls. The gospel does. There is nothing more essential to the world than the gospel of Jesus Christ. In 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4, Paul declares what the gospel is and how important it is to embrace it and share it with others. He reminds the Corinthians of the gospel he preached among them, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, that Christ is coming back for his church someday in the rapture according to the scriptures, as we read in 1 Corinthians 15, 51-55. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed for this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality so when this corruptible has put on incorruption and this mortal has put on immortality then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory O death where is your sting O Hades where is your victory? Jesus promised his followers he was going to go and prepare a place for them in his father's house where there are many mansions, as we read in John 14, 1 through 3. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. This is the essence of the gospel, the pure gospel of Jesus Christ, his death on the cross for sinners, his resurrection to everlasting life, and his coming back someday is central to our Christian faith. 1 Corinthians 1.18 For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Did you see that ad from that group called He Gets Us? Get, generating a lot mm. of criticism on the right and the left. I think they missed this Jesus, Laura.
liberals say these ads are being financed by people who oppose LGBT rights and abortion rights, and conservatives are miffed at that tagline, Jesus didn't teach hate, he washed feet. And there are pro-life folks, if you look at the corner of that ad, there, there are pro-life folks hanging around on the edges while presumably an abortion worker is washing this woman's feet. The question isn't if he gets mm. us. The question is, do we get him? Jesus is a person, not a brand. And this group says we have to reintroduce the brand of Jesus. Good luck with that. This is a little off the mark, it seems to I me. Yeah. And to say that Christians are hate-filled, uh, th this, is, this is no way to gain adherence. No, I didn't like any of it. There are only two groups of people in this world, the saved and the unsaved. Here's a question everyone needs to answer. Whether you are a Democrat, Republican, or not affiliated with either party, do you love Jesus? Many professing Christians say they love Jesus, but in all actuality, they hate him. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Many who profess to be Christ followers are pro-abortion, pro-homosexual, and pro-transgender. They are defiant to the laws of God, as we read in 1 John 3, 4. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. How then can these people claim they love Jesus when he said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Jesus declares, they honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me, as we read in Matthew 15, 8 and 9. These people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me, and in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. For those who say Jesus never said anything about abortion, homosexuality, and transgenderism being a sin. The Bible tells us all scripture is inspired by God as we read in 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Scripture has plenty of negative things to say about killing the innocent and homosexuality. It's called lawlessness. Many professing Christians justify sin by using Christ's commandment to love your neighbor as yourself. Loving your neighbor as yourself means telling them the truth in love, not by condoning their sin. The good news is God will forgive all sin, as we read in 1 John 1.9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. President Biden says that the U.S. is working on a new plan to release more hostages held by Hamas. The deal calls for Israel to stop any anticipated attack on Rafah, the last major Hamas stronghold. Biden announced the potential deal during a meeting Good with afternoon. Jordan's King Abdullah at the White House. As the King and I discussed today, the United States is working on a hostage deal between Israel and Hamas which would bring an immediate and sustained period of calm to Gaza for at least six weeks, which we could then take the time to build something more enduring. Daniel 9, 26 and 27. And after the 62 weeks, Messiah shall be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. The end of it shall be with the flood, until the end of the war desolations are determined. Then he, the Antichrist, shall confirm a covenant with many, who is Israel, the Palestinians, and possibly other Muslim nations, for one week, which is seven years. But in the middle of the week, three and a half years, 
He, the Antichrist, shall bring an end to sacrifice and offering, and on the wings of abominations shall be one who makes desolate, even unto the consummation, which is determined, is poured out on the desolate. In Bible prophecy, we are told in Daniel 9, 26 and 27, the prince who is to come, who is the Antichrist, will come on the world scene and strongly confirm a seven-year covenant of peace in the Middle East between Israel and her enemies. This covenant will kick off the seven-year tribulation. Rafah has turned in recent months into a huge tent city, packed with 1.4 million people who have fled Israeli bombings in the northern and central parts of the enclave. Declared a safe zone only weeks ago, Rafah could soon be one of the most dangerous places to be in the Gaza Strip. World powers are working to stop Israel from bombing and invading the area, where it says it can crush what it sees as Hamas's last strongholds. In Washington, Joe Biden demanded that Israel present a proper plan to protect civilians. As I said yesterday, our military operation in Rafah there, the, the major military operation in Rafa should not proceed without a credible plan, a credible plan for ensuring the safety and support of more than one million people sheltering there. That's not enough for King Abdullah of Jordan, who wants the violence to end at once. Relocating displaced civilians and intensifying the bombing is not an acceptable option. We cannot stand by and let this continue. We need a lasting ceasefire now. This war must end. Defense officials and mediators from Qatar, the U.S., Egypt and Israel are to meet in Cairo on Tuesday to negotiate a deal on a truce and hostages release. According to President Biden, all the key elements are already on the table. Well, there's one key phrase in this, the last stronghold of Hamas. And because it's the last stronghold of Hamas, Israel needs to proceed. Uh, Hamas is the reason for this war. Hamas is the reason for all the civilians being in danger. If they would release the hostages, if they would unconditionally surrender and lay down their arms, then this can all end. If they're not going to do it, then they need to be prepared for the consequences of their action. We see the prophesied Antichrist right onto the world stage in Revelation 6-2. Immediately following the rider of the white horse beginning his conquest of the world, we see peace will be taken from the earth when the rider of the red horse of war begins his ride across the earth as we read in Revelation 6-3 and 4. When he opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature saying, Come and see, another horse, fiery red went out, and it was granted to the one who sat on it to take peace from the earth, and that people should kill one another, and there was given to him a great sword. Those who are here to see this will be as those who lived in the days of Noah. All will be well and life will be moving forward as normal when suddenly a flood of God's judgment will begin to fall on mankind which will last for seven years, the culmination of which will be the visible, physical, bodily return of Jesus Christ to the earth at Armageddon. So as we look at what prophecy predicts is going to occur, potentially in the not-too-distant future, the world is someday going to rejoice that peace has finally come to the Middle East. What will follow that, however, will be anything but peace as the world is suddenly going to explode into warfare. All those who believe in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior will not be here to see the terrible time to come wherein God's judgment will fall upon a world that has forgotten Him. Where will we be? In the presence of Jesus Christ our Lord as a result of the rapture of the church. And there will be no announcement as to when that will take place whatsoever prior to it occurring. And if you find yourself here after it occurs, your future is going to be horrific. The stage is being set for Daniel's prophecy concerning the arrival of the Antichrist, which will be preceded by the rapture of the church. The only conclusion one can draw from all this is this. Jesus Christ is coming soon. Consider this a heads up if you're a Christian and be forewarned if you're a non-believer. If you're watching this and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it's time to get to know him. And the sooner, the better. Let's go to another uh, Fox News alert. We're seeing more attacks from the Houthis in the Red Sea. Iran-backed Houthi rebels are continuing attacks against ships in the Red Sea. According to U.S. Central Command, a cargo ship that was traveling from Brazil, ironically to Iran, was targeted with two missiles launched from Yemen early this morning. The Houthis claimed the vessel was linked to the Americans, but in reality, this ship was Greek-owned. A spokesman for the Houthis claimed the attack was, quote, in vindication of the Palestinian people. 
130 days into the war between Israel and Hamas, that conflict continues to influence global military and political actions. On Monday, President Biden met with Jordan's King Abdullah, the pair calling for a two-state solution. God gives the most dire warning to the nations who would divide up his land, as we read in Joel 3, 1 and 2, and Zechariah 12, 8 and 9. For behold, in those days and at that time, when I bring back the captives of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat, and I will enter into judgment with them there on account of my people, my heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations. They have also divided up my land. In that day, the Lord will defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem. The one who is feeble among them in that day shall be like David, and the house of David shall be like God like the angel of the Lord before them. It shall be in that day that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. This is the headquarters of the DRC MPOX response team, which is trying to get a deadly outbreak of the disease under control. Authorities say it has now spread to 23 of the DRC's 26 provinces. Doctors are treating the most severe cases with symptoms such as painful skin rashes, headaches, and back pain. But health workers say they are struggling to contain the disease and keep it from spreading further. The DRC has recorded more than 14,000 cases of MPOX and 650 deaths since last year. The disease, previously known as monkeypox, is transmitted through contact with infected people or wild animals and many of the cases are among communities living near forests. The MPOX strain circulating in the DRC right now is known as Clade 1, and the World Health Organization says it has a higher fatality rate than the one that was reported globally in 2022. Health experts are warning the disease could spread to other countries if the situation in the DRC is not controlled. The government is working with international agencies to try and contain the spread. But resources are limited, drained by other health emergencies like malaria and an armed conflict in the East. Doctors are trying to spread the word to residents to limit contact with anyone infected. The spread of MPOX through sexual contact has been reported in some neighboring countries, but we have also registered cases here in the Congo. People should avoid having sexual relations with people infected with MPOX or getting very close to them. In 2022, Tens of thousands of MPOX cases were reported in Europe and North America, prompting the WHO to declare a global health emergency. A public health emergency declared in Rio de Janeiro. As millions gather for the carnival, authorities are rallying to combat an explosion of mosquito-borne dengue fever in the city's favelas. At this school, officials have come to tackle an infestation. This is a dangerous place. There are children around, so we're closing this over. We're putting some ray-finned fishes in here. They eat mosquito lava. The number of dengue fever cases in Brazil has increased fourfold. In January 2024, over 262,000 probable cases were recorded, compared to just over 65,000 in the same period last year. Dengue fever can be fatal, although most people don't develop symptoms. Residents are advised to prevent mosquitoes from gaining access to water so they can't breed. Here in Brasilia, a field hospital has been set up to treat dengue patients. The Brazilian government has announced a free vaccination campaign targeting 3.2 million people beginning in February. Priority will go to children aged 10 to 14, the group with the highest number of hospitalizations. Jesus, speaking to his disciples about the signs of his coming and the end of the age, declares this in Matthew 24, 12. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. The Bible tells us lawlessness is the violation of God's commandments, as we read in 1 John 3, 4. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. Sin will be so rampant and so commonplace in the last days that the love people once had for one another, for many, will be non-existent. In this prophecy, Jesus Christ is describing an ongoing breakdown in the relationship with God. And since people's love for God is waning, it will be evident in the way people treat one another as well. A symptom may be that the love toward other people is decreasing, but the real cause is that the relationship with God is cooling off. This is what we are witnessing in our world today. 
Tonight, chilling new details about the shooter at Joel Osteen's Lakewood Church in Houston, where gunfire Sunday sent members running for cover. They were repetitive. Boom, 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 boom. And I yelled, Mom! Police identified the shooter as 36-year-old Genesee Yvonne Moreno and say she was carrying an AR-15 with the word Palestine written on it. Police said they also found anti-Semitic writings during a recent search warrant. We have uncovered some items. We do have some anti-Semitic writings that we have uncovered during this process. But like I said, we are 24 hours into it. Investigators say a dispute between Moreno and her ex-husband's family, some of whom are Jewish, may be related to the shooting. At the church, witnesses say the shooter was wearing a trench coat and opened fire almost immediately after walking inside. The first thing that I thought that I was like, I need to hold my kids really hard, really hard. Um, and I thought that I maybe will die after that. Police confirming Moreno entered the church with her seven-year-old son and was armed with multiple weapons and ammunition. Two off-duty officers returning fire, killing the shooter, her son critically injured in the crossfire. They held their ground in the face of rifle fire at point-blank range, and they continued to fire until the perpetrator was neutralized, and they did not yield. Law enforcement records show the shooter had at least six prior arrests since 2005, including unlawful carrying of a weapon, which she pleaded guilty to, evading arrest and assault on a public official, which she pleaded to a lesser charge. Manano's neighbor, who didn't want to be identified, said she filed a restraining order against her in November. Four years I've been through hell. I have reported this, reported this, reported this, and it's gone on deaf ears. Nobody should have died. Nobody should have been hurt. This should have been handled years ago. Now to the investigation after a deadly subway shooting here in New York. A dispute between two groups of teens ended with six people being shot, one fatally. So this gunfire erupted during rush hour Monday evening. As you mentioned, six people were shot, one of them killed. And police say this was not a random attack. According to police sources, this began as some kind of confrontation between teenagers on the train as it was pulling into the station here, the Mount Eden station in the Bronx, not too far from Yankee Stadium. And according to those sources, one person drew their weapon, it began on the train, and then it spilled out onto the platform. The victims range from 14 all the way up to 71 years old. Those sources say the 14-year-old who was shot was likely involved in this confrontation in some capacity, but everyone else who was shot was an innocent bystander. Now, we have heard five of the six victims had non-life-threatening injuries, but 35-year-old Obed Beltran Sanchez died at the hospital. Now, the shooter fled the scene, and according to police, no weapon was recovered, no arrests had yet been made this morning, but the police chief says when an arrest is made, there needs to be swift and strong consequences. The Apostle Paul in his epistle to Timothy tells us in the last days society will be in a total immoral meltdown. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. The dramatic scene unfolding outside Philadelphia at this hour. Two officers have been shot and the home they were responding to now engulfed in flames. The gunman opening fire as soon as police arrived. It's believed an 11-year-old girl was shot inside. Tonight, this home outside Philadelphia engulfed in flames after a horrific ordeal that left two officers shot and injured. Shot to come from inside the house. Authorities saying the officers arrived to this East Lansdowne home just before 4 p.m., responding to a report of an 11 year old girl shot inside. The officers immediately coming under fire from the suspect. It was rapid gunfire, cops were coming from everywhere, every direction, Just yelling active shooter, close your door. Minutes after the shooting, the home on fire. Chopper video capturing an officer being brought to an ambulance. A SWAT vehicle seen breaking down windows and a wall. Firefighters trying to control the blaze. Still too dangerous for us to go inside uh, and do any further investigation. I will say with a heavy heart that we are afraid there might be more than one person in that house. We know the victim's family 
had a lot of people living in that house, including children. We are aware that there are at least six to eight people who are unaccounted for from that family. Sources confirmed to CBS News Philadelphia that the remains of all six people have now been found in East Lansdowne. It follows a shooting and a fire at a home in that community. Authorities in Tennessee are intensifying their search for the suspect accused of killing one deputy and wounding another during a traffic stop. The suspect's brother and girlfriend arrested overnight, charged with being accessories after the fact. And the reward for information leading to the suspect's capture is climbing. Tonight, the reward topping $80,000 for the suspect wanted in the fatal shooting of a deputy during a routine traffic stop in Tennessee. We're committed to tracking down. It might be today or tomorrow, but we're going to get him, and he's going to be brought to justice. On Thursday night, police say deputies pulled Kenneth Dehart Jr. over for erratic driving in Blunt County, nearly an hour from Knoxville. Dehart seen in this photo from body camera video yet to be released. Police say when he refused to get out of his vehicle, the deputies deployed a stun gun. They say Dehart then pulled a gun, opening fire. Help! Help! I've been shot! Both deputies shot. Deputy Shelby Eggers radioing in. I'm in here. Suspect fled. She returns fire, but the suspect able to get away. She did her job, and she's lucky to be alive. Deputy Greg McCowan pronounced dead, his body escorted to a funeral home by dozens of fellow officers. Overnight, the investigation leading police to DeHart's girlfriend, Carrie Matthews, and his brother, Marcus, both arrested and charged with accessory after the fact. Deputy Eggers has been treated and released from the hospital. Deputy McCowan joined the sheriff's office in 2020 and just a year into his time there, received an award for saving a man from a burning vehicle. Tonight, he is being remembered as a hero. Listen to this. New data from New York City Police Department says that officer attacks are up, as you can see right there, 13% from the previous year's record. More than 4,000 police officers were hurt by suspects in the first nine months of 2023. The numbers for the last quarter have not yet been released, but it, but it is projected to break records with 5,436 injuries against officers. That's according to NYPD data. One of the many signs that we're living in the end times is the epidemic of wickedness and violence that is sweeping the world today. Jesus tells us when society parallels the days of Noah, he will return, as we read in Matthew 24, 37 through 39. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, and did not know until the flood came and took them all away, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. So what was going on in Noah's day that parallels our day? To find out the answer, we need to go back to the book of Genesis 6, 5 through 13. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing, and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. This is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generations. Noah walked with God. And Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. And God said to Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. There is no doubt about the hour in which we live being the season for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ as we link Matthew 24 verses 12 and 37 through 39 with 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. The Bible describes our day very clearly from these scriptures. The condition of wickedness and violence that caused the earth to be destroyed in Noah's day is the same condition our earth is in today. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. 
believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. See, call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.